So all of the get rich quick on YouTube videos I've been watching lately say you should start with a reaction video. I'm not a very reactive or uh, animated person, so that's not going to happen. A how-to video, as you hopefully have seen by watching other videos. I don't know how to do things very well. Or an unboxing video. So, here's a box. I'm going to open it. Let's see what it is. Can't really do unboxing videos that well anymore because there's no money to do it with. But let's we'll start with this and see how it goes. This was originally for the garage project until the damage on the garage was so bad I had to hire a professional to do something with it. So that's on hold until next week when that guy has some availability. So we're going to try this somewhere else. I've seen videos of these things doing cool stuff and getting a lot of cool, lot of junk off of asphalt. So we'll see if we can get the paint spatter and maybe some of the oil off of the uh, courtyard out there, compound. Packaging looks cheap as shit. It's a piece of plastic with a spinny thing in it. These extensions will come in handy though for sure. 64 bucks. I mean, it's really not bad considering it's got two of those extensions. You can use those with a pressure washer handle and any of the tips in theory. Plug the thing in. Run water through it. Use a paper clip if it gets clogged. Change the nozzles eventually. Okay. Much to it. The cruel joke will be if the fittings aren't the same as my other pressure washer bits, but I'm pretty sure they are. It's pretty standard stuff. Nice that it comes with two extensions too, because I don't have a wand. I just have the gun. Yeah, there's that. Let's turn on some water. I had been using these zero degree tips to clean stuff. They were pretty good, they just don't cover a large area. That connects. All right, out into the heat. Think my little pressure washer has it in it to do that. Great mister for the patio though. Yeah, this ain't happening. It seems like it has any pressure at all. Oh, that's about useless. Actually, it's completely useless. That's better. That's what I would expect.
Guess I'm going to be out here with a zero degree nozzle getting all the paint up. So, recommendation for that? Don't buy it. Due to the length of earlier programming, we now join the following program already in progress. All right, so you're joining in kind of in the middle of this. This is something I've put on the back burner for a while. Um, this is a little clippy dealy I made. Put on the back of a TV to point the LED tape outward. Done a couple test prints, made a few revisions. We're going to pretty it up a little bit. And then we're going to print it. There we go. So I got it all rounded off. Not that it's going to matter for the size that it's printing. It just makes me feel better. So the LED tape will sit here. Put a nice deep damper on this so that it will build out as the 3D printer prints it. And it should be good to go in theory. I just got to wait for Fusion to export the STL, which takes 50 years for a simple little file like this. And then we'll try and print it. All right, that finished. Let's close this. Open up. Okay. Uh, Hope this top piece works all right. There we go. That's version three. See what it says? Should be about three minutes. Yep. All right. Let's save this to the SD card. Saving. Ejected. Let's go over to the printer and let's see how it prints. Down here, it's a little bit easier. Try to find the hole. There we go. Printing. That one, hopefully that's the right one. V3, yep, confirm. It's gonna heat up and it's gonna start pretty. whip up 20 or so of these and stick them to the back of my TV. So let's get that sorted.
One hour and 40 minutes. Grab the SD card and we'll get started on that. Hey Google, make the bookshelf and TV LEDs yellow. Hey Google, make the bookshelf and TV LEDs blue. Hey Google, make the TV LEDs blue. Hey Google, put the TV LEDs at 100%. Put the TV LEDs at 50%. 